Hello everyone! Welcome back to My Hero Academia Podfix. Today I'll be continuing with the UA Survival Guide fic. This will be part four, chapter four. Over the next couple of days, Izuku tries to make good on his promise to Oboro. He tries to trust the teachers. Some, like present Mike Sensei, make it easier than others. He's cheerful and loud, watches the class, and already has a vague grip on each of their personalities. He's kind and teaches in an upbeat way that makes Izuku not hate English class entirely. He's noticed the voice hero keeping a close eye on him, and by extension, Kachan too, who is mellowed out to an angered silence after being called to stay after class with Aizawa Sensei. That had been just the day after Sensei had spoken to Izuku in the morning, and the green-haired boy has a sneaking suspicion that Sensei would have done it that same day had Izuku not stayed back to catch up with him. Izuku knows what had gone down between the teacher and Kachan. Aizawa Sensei had briefed him, and he's sure it would, wouldn't be long until he found himself in his own meeting about possible quirk counseling and guidance counseling, but he's still afraid to ask Kachan about it or draw any attention to it at all. Still, the teen finds it odd that it's really just Aizawa Sensei and Mike Sensei who seem to be keeping an eye on the two of them. Present Mike, too, had arranged their partner activity, so Izuku and Kachan were on the other sides of the room from one another, but it was only the, in those two classes. No one else seemed to know or care about it. It was odd. Izuku once again wonders how close Aizawa Sensei and Present Mike Sensei are if he's in the loop of Izuku and Kachan's problems. That should have only involved All Might, the teacher in charge of the battle simulations, and Aizawa Sensei, of course, considering he is their sensei and maybe Principal Nezu. He only gets a chance to ask about it after school a couple of days later. Are President Mike and Aizawa Sensei friends? Izuku asks into the phone, walking home with the ghost at his side, despite the cell phone pressed to his ear to disguise the fact that he's talking to a ghost. When the streets are crowded, his, his head cocks the faintest bit in Obero's direction. In the past few days, they developed a routine of sorts, Obero joining him at home for a couple of hours until either Aizawa Sensei left for patrol or President Mike returned from the radio station. The ghost beside him trips over his own feet as soon as the words leave Izuku's mouth, spluttering unintelligible words of surprise confusion. Izuku knows his own eyebrow arches at the reaction, but now the ghost is too busy laughing to notice. He cackles at Izuku's side, one arm looped around his own stomach like he's laughing to the point it hurts. He laughs until he's struggling to pull in breaths, bending over to force in wheezed gas of, ox of oxygen. Izuku knows he doesn't really need to breathe, he doesn't have lungs, but it's still common courtesy to slow to a stop and stand himself in the grass beside the ghost, out of the way of foot traffic, still moving about. If Obero had any mass to him, Izuku would have reached out to pat his back, but he knows he'd look like a fool petting the air, and of course his hand will just phase through anyway. He's not sure what's so funny about the question. It was a yes or no kind of thing, so what's with the theatrics? Izuku can do nothing more than wilt with a frown as he watches Obero out of the corner of his eye, only speaking up again when the ghost appears to finally be collecting himself. Are you just going to laugh or tell me? I thought you said you'd be my cheat sheet. For classes, not your teachers. The ghost snorts between laughs, wiping his eyes where tears have welled from laughing. That's pretty funny. What gave you that idea, anyway? They arrived to school together most of the time, Izuku mutters factually, even though he'd only really seen that once. And they seem close. I mean, present Mike acts like he knows about Kachan and I, even though only All Might and Aizawa Sensei should. Plus, you said it yourself, present Mike Sensei did damage control after Aizawa Sensei's first class, and you hang around the both of them, so they've got to be close, at least a bit. Obero listens intently, a grin curving onto his lips. All good points, all good points, but have you considered alternatives? Alternatives? Izuku quirks his head, slowly starting to walk again as Obero falls into step with him. He's calmed down, though his face has a bit more color after the laughing fit. Sure, the ghost shrugs, grin never wavering. Like the fact that carpool's the thing, it's cheaper even. Or the alternatives that teachers are big old gossips about their students. It's hardly a secret if it affects you all the same in every class. And I'm sure any teacher after show would do some damage control. Zashi's just good at it, and he's the first to get his hands on you a lot, so since you're in, in his first class. And as much as I appreciate you lumping me in with them, I'm just along for the ride, you know? Izuku pouts, shifting the phone against his face a bit when it starts to slip. 
Well, sure, but that doesn't answer my question. Are they close? Sensei looks at Mike like he's always annoyed with him, and Mike seems very comfortable with Aizawa Sensei. Well, Obro flashes that wide, squinty grin, but there's more humor in this one than the usual one. Yeah, I guess you could say that they're close. Yeah. The jocular way that the ghost mumbles the words, and the bordering, devious curl on his lips has Izuku rethinking at even asking the question at all. Obero's good at keeping secrets and skirting around what he wants to, to, but the perks of being a ghost, Izuku supposes. Izuku blows out a quiet sigh, angling his head to shoot his friend a half-heartedly annoyed look before it melts into a half-smile. It's more defeat than anything else, but he doesn't take it to heart. Obero doesn't try to add anything else, and at that point, Izuku's sure what he'd gotten was all he was going to be able to get out of the ghost. The boy bites the inside of his cheek, accepting his defeat completely with a click of his tongue that he hopes conveys the remaining annoyance he feels when he catches sight of the idiot grinning like an, well, idiot at his side. The living teen lets out a huff, pacing his steps faster for a couple seconds, just enough to leave Obero a couple paces behind, but not to leave him in the dust. All Obero does is chuckle, eyes locked on Izuku and filled with nothing but mirth. The green-haired boy rolls his eyes, but he knows there's a grin curling onto his lips. You're awful. I'm fun, the ghost cheers, skipping to join Izuku at his side again. He sways closer, and for a moment, Izuku thinks that Obero might throw an arm around his shoulders and tug him into his side. It feels right. He hasn't known the ghost, you know, that long, but it feels like something he'd do. The ghost doesn't. Can't. But Izuku can almost feel his intentions, even as he blows out a breath and pulls away with a sad, lopsided smile. Honestly, he comes out of the conversation just as confused as he'd gone into it. Obero speaking in riddles was annoying, but he supposes that the ghost likes having some mystery surrounding him, or he just likes being an evasive dork sometimes. He doesn't know a lot about the ghost. Obero knows a lot more about Izuku than Izuku does about him. But he also doesn't want to push the ghost away. He is hopeful that at some point his new friend will tell him some stuff about him because he wants to, not because he has to. Either way, Izuku doesn't really get an answer because for some reason, probably the devious smile on the ghost's face, he's sure his friend is leading him along on the topic. So he's still left to wonder. He assumes Sensei and President Mike are friends, or at least teaching buddies or something. They're polar opposites, so Izuku's not even sure how any sort of relationship sparked, but he's sure that they're more than just acquaintances. He thinks about it for the rest of the day, but by the following morning, his thoughts had shifted to other things, like his classwork and the still weighing request from his ghost friend to talk to Aizawa Sensei. So yeah, he's trying to trust more. He really is. He's trying to give them a chance, and some of the teachers seem like they'll be allies, but others seem stern, like Aizawa Sensei. He wants to trust Aizawa Sensei. He seems trustworthy. And for his part, he has actually been a good teacher thus far, caring and attentive in his own standoffish way. But on the other hand, Izuku was a strong believer of first impressions. And the truth of that was Izuku's first actual memorial impression of the man was him telling him that he was as good as useless even with his quirk and threatening to expel him right off the bat. Sure, he'd come to Izuku's defense when it came to Kachan, and he put the effort of trying to keep him safe at school. As he'd promised Izuku, the two of them hadn't been paired or pinned against each other at all since the battle training, and he'd even apologized for heaven's sake, but it was still odd. Maybe his homeroom teacher really was a softie underneath all that stern tiredness. He had no reason not to trust Obero, but it was just hard. The longer Izuku put off breaching the topic of telling his frankly kind of scary sensei of his newly acquired quirk, the more antsy that Obero seemed to get. He hadn't really brought it up at that first week of school. He let Izuku settle into his classes, learn his teachers. Izuku should be thankful that the ghost had given him so much leeway so he could settle into the school year. Izuku found that he liked having Obero around. He was a positive addition to his life, bright and cheerful, yet sarcastic and sometimes infuriating. He was like every other teen Izuku had known, yet there was something older and wiser about him as well. The, joke ha the ghost had a distinct personality. It was refreshing, joking and teasing, yet heartwarmingly kind and sensitive. He wasn't one to be quieted unless it was on his terms, and he also wasn't quiet about his opinions. He hadn't censored himself when talking about Kachan or All Might, after all, so that might have been Izuku's first real glimpse into the kind of guy Obero was before he'd passed. 
For the first time in his life, since he'd been diagnosed as quirkless, it felt like he had an actual friend. A friend who he oftentimes forgets as a ghost. They just seem to click, and Izuku's not sure whether that's because they were both destined to be friends, dead or alive, or whether they both really just needed something out of this friendship. He likes to think it's the former, but he knows there's some truth in the latter as well. Still, it's nice to see Oboro's true personality starting to shine through as he gets more comfortable with Izuku. He is a great guy, but damn can he be annoying. Like now, on this Wednesday morning, halfway through his second week of classes at UA, for the most part, Obro had tried to keep himself quiet and contained during classes. He was there, in English and hero training, as well as homeroom, but he didn't talk much or tease like he had those first two days. His presence during classes had been a seen-not-heard sort of ordeal, which was okay. That was the first week, at least. That seems to have worn off by now. He'd been a bit more annoying as the week carried on, watching over Izuku's shoulder, adding input that doesn't really help, trying to help more than Izuku would like with his classwork and stuff. It's been a little stuff, you know, easily ignored or deterred by a stern snipe from Izuku, but there's something different in it today. That one's wrong. Obero is leaning over Izuku's shoulder, arms crossed over the back of his chair, and he's sure, if the ghost could, his chin would be hooked over Izuku's shoulder. He'd gotten used to the icy chill, and now it only gets a reaction out of him when Obero purposely phases through him or they accidentally brush one another. Izuku tightens his hand on his pencil, afraid for a second that one for all would activate and he'd crush the wood. Don't help me, Izuku hisses under his breath, studying the answer he'd written before finding his mistake and erasing it with a glare shot over his shoulder. But you're doing it wrong, the ghost insists, without a care that he was literally feeding Izuku test answers. Obero's head lulls to catch Izuku's glare where he grins teasingly. Like number three, you put the comma in the wrong spot. This is cheating, Izuku glares down at his work, not seeing the mistake. Stop. It's only cheating if you get caught, Obero shrugs, leaning even closer over Izuku's shoulder. That's the wrong punctuation in question, mark, in question number six, by the way. Knock it off, Izuku whispers in annoyance, and he has half a mind to throw his hand back through Obero's face, and he would have, had it not been for the fact that it would be re like really punching him in the face. I can do this alone. Really, I insist I do this alone. Thanks, but no thanks. Yeah, maybe, but you've got to accept, accept help, some help somewhere in your life. Izuku feels a weight form in his stomach at the words. If you're not going to let Shota help you with your quirk, I'll at least help you with your English grade, whether you want that or not. I don't need help, the green-haired boy snarls softly. His attention flicks up to Mike Sensei, who is still focused on whatever he's writing up front. He's giving them all of class to write the test, only looking up every so often to check for raised hands, but the thought that Izuku is technically cheating, whether he's trying to or not, makes his stomach churn. This is a test. Whether you want it or not, Obero repeats firmly. I'm sorry, Izu, but I can't just sit back and watch you work yourself to the ground. You're not alone in this anymore. And if you won't accept help for yourself, I'll give it to you, even if that's not what you really want. So you're blackmailing me. He narrows his eyes, attention cocking to the look at the ghost. That's heroic. I wouldn't call it that, Obero grins. Threatening, then. That's a bit closer, the ghost concedes. He's got a smile on his face, but it falls when he looks over at Izuku. I know you don't want to. I get it. You don't trust teachers. But you're going to run yourself into the ground if you keep shouldering everything alone. I went to school here, too. I know the workload. You can't do this alone, Izu. I'm just trying to help. I don't need help with English, the boy mutters. Dropping his head down to the desk, his forehead rests on the edge. Gaze dropped to his lap. He sees Obero sit on the floor against the desk leg out of the corner of his eye, so he turns his head to look at him. That's debatable, Obero retorts, not unkindly. That's fair, actually, considering all the wrong answers, but the point's to learn, not know it all. I know, I know, Obero sighs, looking defeated. I just, I don't want to see you struggling because you won't accept any help. You're learning your quirk, I know you are, but you're in class 1A, man. You've got to be the best of the best to keep up. I know you can. You've got power and drive, but you can't do it alone. And, and it sucks that I can't help you. The defeat seems to overwhelm the ghost as he pauses, searching for what he wants to say next. Izuku wants to comfort him, but it's not really the time nor the place, considering his whole class is spread around working on their test, and present Mike Sensei is still up front. But Shota can help. He is hard on you, but that's because he's under the impression that you've had your quirk since you were a kid. But you haven't.
Izuku bites at the skin on the bo his bottom lip as he studies the ghost. There's a metallic twinge in his mouth, which tells him he bit a little too hard, so he releases his lip and heaves a silent sigh. He hadn't known Obero was this worried about it. You're really at a different, a, diff a different disadvantage here. You're making it harder on yourself when you don't have to. I've seen students burn out. I've seen them work themselves to the ground. One of my best friends did too. The pause is reminiscent before his attention turns back abruptly. I won't let it happen to another friend. You'll make a great hero, Izuku. You just, you've just got to let people help you do that. He's not sure what to say, how to respond. He feels guilty now. The churn of annoyance in his stomach from earlier swiftly melts into something more bitter, like a brick weighing his heavily in his stomach. He doesn't get the chance to offer a response because he jolts when a hand lands softly on his shoulder blade. When he sits up, eyes flicking down to Obero before he notices present Mike Sensei crouch beside him on the other side of the desk from Obero. You doing all right, little listener? The teacher's voice is soft as not to disturb those around him. You've had your head down for a bit. Anything I can help you with? He glances down again against his better judgment, seeing the pleading look on his friend's face. His face crumples when Izuku catches his eye, and it's only then that Izuku realizes his eyes are filled with unshed tears. He'd always been a crier. Um, Izuku's voice wobbles, but he clears his throat to steady it. I, I guess I'm struggling a little. Just, just a bit frustrated, I think. He wipes away the, his tears before they fall, looking down at his paper again. That's all right, President Mike smiles softly, hands squeezing his shoulder briefly before his palms flatten on the desk and he rises up a bit to let his gaze scan the paper. We all get frustrated, yeah? I'll help you understand what you're struggling with. Then you can try again. Sound good? Sounds good. Izuku ducks his head in a thankful nod that doubles as a chance to catch the ghost's eye under his table. His smile is small, but it's honest, prideful, which in turn makes Izuku's lips curl into a tiny smile. It's not exactly what Obero was looking for, but it's a step in the right direction. He's asking for help, he could have claimed to be okay, and Mike Sensei would have nodded and stood, leaving him to it, but he hadn't. Good, present Mike grins, oblivious to the interaction between Izuku and his ghostly friend. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, I see what you're doing wrong with these. You're totally on the right track, though, little listener. Let's just... And if Izuku's foot freezes as the ghost's hand phases through it in a knowing gesture, he can't find it in himself to care. Attention on his paper, focus on his sensei and a small smile settling onto his lips at the gesture. It was Friday now. Izuku had survived the first two weeks of school. After Wednesday's English class, Izuku had been thinking long and hard about asking for help. He's still scared of the thought that, and asking in general, but there's that inkling of fear when he thinks of asking a teacher who was going to expel him too. But it's slowly easing the more time he spends with the homeroom teacher. Obero hadn't eased up on attempting to persuade him into talking to his sensei, but he had stepped back from interjecting himself in Izuku's classwork. It was a compromise for the time being that Izuku didn't mind. He knew his friend was trying to help, maybe not in the right way, but he understood. Obero had made good points, and he had been right about present Mike being a good guy. The voice hero had proved himself to be exactly what Obero had insisted. Seeing as after school that Wednesday, Izuku had joined him for a bit of extra help with the English concept they were learning, and he already felt more confident with them. Overall, he'd been doing all right with his classes. He was good at the actual schoolwork. He had top grades with Kashan at their junior high, but he knows he's already falling behind in his hero courses, and that won't do. Aizawa Sensei has already made it clear that he's not afraid to expel those who don't meet his expectations, and Izuku's terrified one of these days his teacher will just drop him. Obero has told him that his sensei sees potential in him, but he's still so scared. They don't spend every day working with their quirks. It's a one-on, one-off kind of thing, and Izuku's sure his teacher's giving them a bit of a break after the battle exercises. He appreciated the gesture while his burnt arm continues to heal, but by the end of the first week, he'd been allowed to take the bandages off for it to breathe. That didn't make it, that didn't mean it didn't look bad, though. He hadn't really gotten hurt again, not like that first exercise at least, but to be fair, he hadn't really had the opportunity to really injure himself. He hadn't been forced to use his quirk like he had in the exercise with All Might. Truthfully, they'd spent quite a bit of time in the classroom. They'd selected a class president, Ida, and a vice president, Momo. Well, to be fair, Izuku had been elected first, and boy, had Obero laughed. <laughs> and that just made Izuku flush brighter and stutter through his words. Thankfully, it was decided that Ida was more suited for the role. 
But besides that, they worked on some paperwork and assignments, like writing about their quirks, what they knew, negatives of their quirks, their limits, and theories about what they could possibly accomplish when given actual quirk training. That's not to say they didn't do anything with their quirks. They did. Aizawa-sensei was still trying to gauge what they could do, so they did some sparring in pairs. Zuku and Kachan on either side of the room with their appointed partners, and other tasks where they could put their quirks in the spotlight. Izuku tried hard not to use one for all because he didn't want to hurt anyone, and he could see that Aizawa-sensei had taken notice of his hesitance. His sensei hadn't said anything, but he could feel the man's observing gaze on his back. Izuku knew he was miles behind his peers. He was afraid to use his new quirk, afraid to do damage to someone else, or hurt himself too bad, to the point his teacher cuts him out. Oboro promises that Aizawa-sensei would never do that, but Izuku's still hesitant. Oboro had continued to press Izuku about telling Aizawa-sensei about how recently he'd gotten the quirk, promising it would make all the difference in the world. He'd been putting it off, slipping out of school before his ghost friend had the chance to pressure him into it. Oboro was wise to his tricks, and there's not really that much a ghost can do, though. Izuku's afraid, but he knows he has to. He either needs to give Aizawa-sensei some information, let him be him himself be helped, or he's going to fall behind and get the boot out of the class. There's thousands of kids who'd kill for a spot in Class 1A, so he'll be damned if he lets this slip between his fingers because of his own fear or pride. That said, he's still hesitant. Even now, as he stands outside his homeroom classroom after school, he knows what he has to do, knows what's right. He just needs to, well, work up the courage. Class had let out after a long afternoon of training. They'd been in the gym working individually, pushing their quirks as hard as they could under their sensei's orders. Aizawa-sensei had observed them, all from his spot, attention lulling from student to student, which included Izuku practicing turning one for all on and off. He knows it's not impressing, but if he can master that, if he can't master that, what's the point? His peers had all disappeared out of the changing room doors and dispersed on their way home, but Izuku had found himself slowly stepping towards their home room instead of out the main doors. Part of him hopes that the longer he takes to get to the classroom, the better chance that Aizawa-sensei would have just left already, and he could avoid this altogether. He doesn't really want to let his teacher in, but he knows he has to. His peers are quickly pulling ahead of him, and if he doesn't change that, he'll be forever stuck at the bottom, even with a man for all. Then he really would be nothing more than a waste of a quirk. I mean, like Aizawa-sensei had said that first day. He lingers outside of the door. Hands poised to knock. He is not sure why he can't force his knuckles down onto the door to alert Aizawa-sensei, if he's even in there, that he's here. His chest feels tight, and his hand trembles where it's hovering by the door. His throat feels thick and dry, but when he swallows in an attempt to wet it, it makes it, his stomach churn uncomfortably. When he finally works up the courage to knock, he squeezes his eyes shut, but before he can force himself to lower his knuckles, the hinges on the door wheeze as they're rolled open. Izuku takes a surprise step back, arm dropping to his side like he's a child who's been caught doing something naughty, like stealing a cookie or something, as his eyes snap open. Aizawa-sensei looks about as surprised as the man ever has, and it just fills Izuku with a sense of dread. S -s sensei Izuku forces out, hoping his voice didn't come out as a squeak. It probably did, considering Aizawa-sensei's eyebrows bunched together, and his lips curled down in a light frown. Midoriya, he greets in reply eyeing the student from head to toe as if gauging if he needs to escort him to recovery girl. It's a fair assumption, considering the past first week, but Izuku feels his cheeks burning at the insinuation. Was there something you needed, or do you hover outside of all your classes after school? I, I... Izuku's heart hammers in his chest, and he's sure the blood pressure is through the roof. I, um, I was wondering if I could, if I could talk to you, you know, about my quirk? Aizawa-sensei, for his part, waits patiently while Izuku mutters his way through the shaky request. When the teen had gone quiet, his eyes dropped down to the arm that had been in a sling those first few days, but his gaze lifts before Izuku can self-consciously tuck his arm out of sight behind his back. There's a thoughtful second before his sensei gives a faint nod, moving to step out of the room, only to pause cautiously, glancing behind him before catching Izuku's gaze. Would you feel more comfortable in the classroom or one of the conference rooms? I don't, I doubt anyone will come into the classroom, but the conference rooms are soundproof. Conference room? Izuku asks meekly, hunching in on himself. He's not even supposed to be telling anyone about one for all, but here he is. The least he can do is make sure no one else besides Aisawa-sensei hears this. 
There's a nauseating mix of sinking guilt and hopefulness swirling around in his stomach. He hasn't even said anything yet, but he still feels like he's betraying All Might. But on the other hand, he can't be the only living person who knows about this. He doesn't want to carry this alone and have it wedge further between his own inching growth or being able to handle one for all and how his peers are flourishing with their quirks, thriving under Aizawa Sensei's teachings. He hadn't even gotten the chance to run it by All Might since the pro had been busy with classes and using what little of his strength there is to parade around town as the symbol of peace. His hands ring together in front of him as Aizawa Sensei finally steps out the door, shutting it behind himself. The teacher's gaze sweeps over Zuku and the empty hallway before he turns. Come with me. Zuku falls into step behind his teacher, following blindly. He's never seen the conference rooms, but he's also not ever had a reason to visit yet. Still, he's nervous. His knees feel weak, and he struggles to keep up with his teacher's sluggish pace. They don't say anything as Aizawa Sensei leads him along, first into the teacher's lounge where Zuku hesitates for just a second outside the door, then into a room leading off the side room. There's three doorways spaced along the wall, and the teen's sure that they're all soundproof conference rooms. There are a few teachers in the lounge, present Mike Sensei and the R-rated hero Midnight. He thinks he sees Snipe and maybe Thirteen, too, but he's still trying to keep his focus on not throwing up due to the nerves, and keeping himself upright lest he fall over in front of all these pro-hero teachers. Aizawa Sensei slides the door open and gestures Izuku in before stepping in and sliding the door shut again. There are two couches on either side of the coffee table, settled in between them, and Aizawa Sensei slinks into one and follows Izuku's lead as he settles down on the one across from him, holding himself stiffly as his teacher all but collapses into his. The silence rings in Izuku's ears, and it takes far too long for him to realize that Aizawa Sensei is letting Izuku guide the conversation entirely. He asks to speak about his own quirk. Why would Aizawa Sensei lead a meeting that Izuku requested? The boy takes another moment to gather his, co his thoughts, trying to organize what he's going to say without spilling too much. He'd had a problem with that recently, first with Kachan, then with Oboro. He wants his teacher to understand, but he doesn't want to completely destroy the trust he has with the number one hero. I'm, I'm not good at using my quirk, as Izuku decides to start out with, voice devoid of any emotions. It, well, as you've seen, it hurts my body. It's just, it's so powerful. Aizawa Sensei's gaze is focused on Izuku, but it's not prying. He's trying to understand, probably trying to figure out where this conversation is heading. Okay, the man lets out lowly, when Izuku can't find anything else to add. I know all this already, Midoriya. I've seen what your cork does to you, and I know it's powerful just by seeing what it does to your body. The teen shuts his eyes, forcing out a slow breath that he hopes might calm his nerves a little. It doesn't, as his hand tightens into a fist to the point that his knuckles blanch to a pasty white. There, there's something about my quirk that I should tell you. His teacher is silent across from him, letting the, him wade through the conversation however he can. Izuku silently wishes his teacher would have mercy on him and take the reins, but he's starting to realize that that's not how Aizawa Sensei rolls. Izuku opens his eyes, but refuses to look up at his teacher, and instead locks his eyes on the fist he unclenches. I know it doesn't seem like I've been putting in much effort in our hero training classes. Everyone else has been working really hard, pushing themselves to the limit. They've been working so hard, and I see that, and, I, and I've been trying to, but it's, it's different for me, Sensei. Different how? Izuku looks up to see his teacher's eyes on him, alert and cautious. He must have seen that it's different, too. Had he been waiting for Izuku to make the first move? There's a lot that makes this different, one for all or one. How he'd gotten this quirk, how recently he'd gotten his quirk, the power that he's unused to. It's feeling like he's learning how to use one for all by taking one step forward followed by three step backwards. He's afraid to use this power. He's afraid that he'll never live up to All Might's legacy with it either. I'm afraid, Izuku settles on, whispering the words out just above his own breath. He can feel his heart pounding in his chest at the quiet admission. It's beating so hard that he can hear the thumps in his own ears. Aizawa Sensei leans forward, narrowing his eyes. You're afraid, the teacher repeats uncertainly. Of? My quirk. Izuku's gaze is back down on his hand, fingers clenching in a fist before flattening out repeatedly, a repetition that almost calms him down. I don't know how to use it, Sensei. I'm afraid I'll hurt someone or, or myself worse than I already have. I've been trying to understand it, but I don't know how. I don't get it. His sensei is thoughtfully quiet, unwavering gaze on Izuku, 
When his gaze does move, it's down to where Zuku is still tensing and relaxing his fist, and his gaze only lingers for a second before his eyes lift back to his face. Zuku would give anything in this moment to know what his teacher was thinking. They didn't teach you how to control this in quirk counseling, quirk training. It's been a few years since I went to school, but I'm sure that that's still something they do, especially for someone with a powerful quirk. The teen winces, wringing his hands together instead. He sucks in a breath, shaking his head. I never went, sensei. Never. Staggering confusion curls his tone. It's enough to have the boy looking up, surprised to see the blatant shock on his teacher's face, the emotions gone as fast as it appeared, but Izuku's still reeling from seeing it. You didn't do any? None? No, sensei, the boy whispers. Why didn't you go? The teacher's voice is stern. The annoyance from the first day is back. Izuku recoils slightly. He catches himself doing it and forces himself to keep in place. It, it wasn't offered? The teen swallows hard. N not to me, sensei. They Quirkless kids don't need quirk training or counseling. It was a waste of funds for someone like me to see the counselor, so they I wasn't allowed. You're not quirkless, the teacher retorts with an un unamused look. Despite the expression, his words are suddenly uncertain. Tell me you're joking, Midoriya. I'm not, sensei. The teenager shakes his head. I never got my quirk growing up. He doesn't bother mentioning the fact that he was diagnosed medically quirkless at age four. He's not sure how he'd cover that up. That the toe joint doesn't lie, right? When, Aizawa sensei's voice is stern, Izuku jolts up in surprise at the hard tone. His eyes jerk to his teacher, but he can't read anything in the expression. It's hard, but not angry. There's no irritation or annoyance, or anything he's used to seeing on the man's face. His lips are pressed into a thin line, and his eyes are boring into Izuku's own like he's searching for an answer. When, he'd asked? But what did he mean? When what? S sensei When, he repeats, voice unchanging. When did you get your quirk, Midoriya? The teenager hesitates, fiddling with his own fingers. Aizawa sensei doesn't demand again, but he doesn't offer anything else either. It's clear that this isn't something Izuku can step around. His teacher is waiting for an answer, demanding one. Does it matter, sensei? It does. The man levels a stern look. Of course it matters. When did your quirk manifest, Midoriya? The day of the entrance exam. His teacher sucks in a breath like Izuku had sucker punched him in the stomach. His eyes widen, but unlike Izuku when he's surprised, his gaze doesn't stray from Izuku's face. Neither say anything for a second. Izuku's so out of his depth, and Aizawa sensei looks shell shocked. It takes a second for his teacher to finally move again. The shock drains from his face, and, he, and then he's back to that expressionless boredom that he has in class. If it weren't for the glint of sudden understanding in the man's eyes, Izuku would think that the past conversation hadn't even happened. So let me get this straight. The teacher's tone is neutral. Izuku's not sure whether to be terrified of the tone or thankful that it's not blatant anger. You got your quirk on the morning of the entrance exam. You used it for, I'm going to guess, the first time taking out the zero-pointer which both, both broke your legs and your arm. Then you proceeded to change your quirk status before school started, so the fact that you were quirkless before didn't show up on your record unless someone dug for it, then showed up to my class after, what, two weeks of having your quirk, no counseling, no training, nothing? N no, sensei, Izuku wheezes out, suddenly feeling like this is a horrible idea. Why had he let Oboro talk him into this? Where the hell even was Oboro? He's expecting his teacher to stand up, expel him on the spot, escort him out. He's expecting yelling, anger, no rage, actually. He expects a lot of things, but what he's not expecting is for his teacher to all but knelt back into the couch. He lets out a deep and heavy sigh, dragging a palm down his face before he sits up again as, and his tired eyes are back on Izuku. I knew there was something wrong, right from the first second you punched that robot, rendering yourself useless. You and that quirk, I knew it. There was something off about you, Midoriya. I just didn't expect it to be something like this. You've only had your quirk for a month, four weeks. His teacher clicks his tongue distastefully. Frankly, Midoriya, and here it comes. You're expelled. I'm impressed. Zuku jolts upright, gaze instantly captured by his teacher's gray eyes. He's not sure, but he thinks he might mumble a starstruck, what? I'm not happy, of course. I should have been made aware of this from day one for your safety and your classmates' safety as well. It would have drastically changed my lesson plan for you, and I could have arranged proper counseling sessions for you as well. This course, my lessons, are geared towards students who have already had a general handle on their capabilities, but I am impressed nonetheless. It's honestly surprising you've managed to keep up with my class as well as you have been, considering how recently you got your quirk 
and how little practice you've had controlling it. Impressed. Aizawa sensei was impressed. Izuku had impressed his sensei. That said, the man's tone changes, sterner but calm at the same time. It almost matches that first day, but it's also completely different. Izuku's not afraid anymore. Not telling me your homeroom teacher and hero studies teacher was reckless and illogical, Midoriya. I understand this is a sensitive situation. A quirk coming in late is rare, but you should have at least put right into quirk tra training and counseling, which you will be now. You've done well thus far, but there is a large margin for improvement. Izuku nods, because that seems fair. He knows all this already. These were points that Oboro had stressed as well. Plus, he'd already seen his elementary classmates after they'd gotten their quirks, and he'd seen how much counseling actually aided in the development of said quirks. So, I won't be expelled? Izuku asked slowly after their conversation had faded off. He knows it's not over quite yet, but he's taking the chance to ask what has been on his mind. No, Sensei huffs. I saw potential in you, Midoriya. Potential in a quirk that I thought you had the barest of control over. When I come to find out is completely true, you have a lot of work to do. You'll need to catch up to your peers, but I do see potential. I'm ready to do whatever it takes to become a hero, Sensei. I don't doubt that, the man shrugs, leaning back against the couch. Now, about that training and counseling, I'll personally be handling your quirk training. Neither of us know what you're capable of, so it's best that I'm there to erase your quirk if it gets out of hand. Or, I think you're in danger. The counseling will be Hound Dog, who will be briefed on need-to-know information, which is just how recent you got your quirk. He'll also take some of that time to guide you in ordinary counseling, like I mentioned last week. But I won't get expelled. No problem, child, comes the side response. You won't get expelled. Not for this. Although this will change some aspects of class, don't expect me to go easy on you. You're training to be a hero. I'm still going to treat you as such. I'm not going to treat you any differently than any of my other students, so if you're slacking off or wasting my time, you'll be dealt with accordingly. Thank you, Aizawa-sensei. Izuku can't help but mumble gratefully. He bows his upper body and ducks his head down respectfully. He really hadn't wanted any special treatment to come out of this. He just... he needed help. He needed someone who knows quirks. Someone who has the time to help. Izuku's beyond thankful for All Might being trying to do what he's been trying to do with him, but he appreciates the quick check-ins and those passing moments where the number one hero would bestow nuggets of wisdom unto him. He knows All Might's been trying, but he's really got an image to uphold and fans and his teaching and a whole lot of other responsibilities on his plate. Izuku comes second to all that. Don't thank me, problem child, Sensei snorts, waving him off with a tired flap of his hand. I expect great things from you, so don't let me down. Got it? I won't, Izuku perks up confidently. I promise, Sensei, I won't let you down. Izuku thinks his eyes are playing tricks on him because if he's not mistaken, then... That's a smile on his sensei's face. It's tiny, hardly even there, but he's sure the corners of his lips have curled up the slightest bit upwards. He's never seen his sensei smile before. He doesn't even think his sensei is the type to actually smile. Overwhelmed by it, Izuku throws himself into another bow, feeling his eyes water traitorously. Thank you, sensei. Thank you for agreeing to meet with me and listening to me. Thanks for trusting me enough to tell me, sensei returns. And when Izuku looks up again, the smile is gone from his teacher's face. Though I do wish you would have told me sooner, and I am curious what compelled you to tell me now, though. Ah, uh, Izuku rubs the back of his neck anxiously, lips twitching into a smile as he thinks to the persistent ghost who was trying to be, oh, he's going to be over the moon at his victory. A friend convinced me, actually. He was very concerned when he found out and was persistent that I tell someone, you specifically. Oh? The man cocks his head in interest. He looks like he wants to ask more questions, but instead he turns his head away from Izuku bangs falling into his face. Your friend's smart, then. Why me, specifically? For that one, all Izuku can do is shrug, because he really doesn't know. Oboro hadn't told him why, besides the fact that he was hell-bent on convincing Izuku his sensei was a good teacher in person. He doesn't want to tell his sensei that, especially when Aizawa-sensei was clever and observant. I'm not sure, sensei. Aizawa-sensei's quiet for a moment, lost in thought. He looks towards Izuku, studies his face before looking away again. He looks like he wants to ask questions. His expression is a mixture of confusion and interest, but he doesn't ask anything. It's late, the teacher huffs out instead, standing up and stretching his back in a way that resembles a cat. I'm sure your mother must be wondering where you are, so you should head home, problem child. R right, Izuku forces himself up, shuffling his feet nervously as he follows his sensei to the door. He knows his mother isn't worrying, 
where he is. He doubts she's even home. Still, he bows his head. Thank you again, Aizawa Sensei. His teacher gives a grunt of acknowledgement before pushing the door open, finally glancing down at Izuku over his nose. We'll sort out everything else on Monday, either in the morning or after school, whichever you prefer. I'll be here. Okay. Another thank you sits on the tip of his tongue, but he bites it back, his teacher already giving him a look of annoyance. I'll come earlier on Monday, if that's if that's all right. I, ha, have a good weekend, Sensei. Yeah. Aizawa Sensei huffs out tiredly. You too, problem child. Now off you go. Shoo. The teacher's lounge had cleared out, well, except for present Mike Sensei and Oboro, who Izuku immediately finds sitting on the floor besides the door he'd just come out of. You know, I don't want to be that person, but... His friend jerks upright, grinning knowingly as he pushes himself up to his feet. I told you so. Uh-huh. Izuku manages to draw out under his breath, shooting the ghost an eye roll, even though he has a small, thankful smile on his face. Izuku feels his teacher brush against him as he slips out of the door, and it's just then that Izuku realizes he'd stopped in the doorway at spotting Oboro. Says, sorry, sensei. His teacher flaps a tired hand at him, moving on into the teacher's lounge, where he grabs that yellow sleeping bag he always has in homeroom, but never when they're training. It had been hidden behind the couch. Izuku suddenly feels out of place where he stood in the teacher's lounge. He clears his throat, attracting both his teacher's attentions, then flashes a nervous smile. Thank you once again, Sensei, and, and have a good weekend, Mike Sensei. You too, Aizawa Sensei, but I already told you that. Um, Present Mike is grinning, and even Aizawa Sensei doesn't appear annoyed anymore, which is a step up from usual. The two share a look before both their attentions fall onto him again. Thank you, little listener. Mike Sensei cheers brightly. You have a good weekend as well. A racer here kept you far too long. Best get you home now before your folks get worried, you hear? Technically, Sensei drawled before Izuku could respond, he kept me far too long. The dark-haired teacher flicks Mike Sensei on his leather jacket covered shoulder as he walks past with his sleeping bag in hand. I didn't force him here, he asked. Don't blame our innocent little listener, student eraser. Midoriya's a good dear. Problem child. He's a dear problem child. Izuku turned his head subtly to glance at Oboro, who was watching on with both annoyance and amusement on his face. He looked done with the two teachers, but he also looked greatly entertained. Thank you, Izuku smiled softly. When the half-hearted bickering between the two dies down, as he moves towards the door now, Oboro on his heel, no doubt waiting to talk and probably boast about being right again. For the well wishes, Mike Sensei, and I will, but I doubt my mother will be worried. The two teachers share a look that Izuku doesn't notice as he turns through the handle of the door. Oboro shoots a hopeful look at the two teachers, praying that they'll hear the same disguised hint in the words that he does, even if Izuku hadn't intentionally meant to give anything away of his living situation. He deflates when so Shota opens his mouth, though. Have a good night, problem child. Don't forget about Monday. I won't, Izuku chirps, waving at the two with a smile. Hisashi returns the wave with just as much enthusiasm, but... Shota merely cocks an eyebrow as he steps into his sleeping bag. Bye, senseis. Then the kid's gone. You two are so unbelievably dense. I guess some things never really change, Elvaro sighs as he lingers, shooting his friends an exasperated look before stepping through the door. Hey, Zuku, wait up! There's a moment of silence in the teacher's lounge before Shota pulls up his sleeping bag, zipping it up and pulling the hood down so he's nothing more than a face in a stray black hairs. I don't like this, Sashi. Shota breaks the silence, shaking his head as he collapses on the couch beside his husband. Don't like what? Hizashi looks down at him, leaning back against the couch for a bit of relaxation before leaving the radio for the radio station tonight. They always took the first little while after school to chill before Hizashi would leave, and Shota would catch up on all his sleep before he would go to his patrol. There's something different about that kid. I just... I can't put my finger on what... The man shook his head as he inched towards his husband, Hizashi's hand settled on top of the sleeping bag-covered head, just resting it there. I don't think he's got the best home life, either, but that's not what's off about him. That's just what I've noticed. What makes you say that? His mother didn't come in after the battle exercises. The kid broke his arm, had his other arm burnt to a crisp, and he lost consciousness. Shio couldn't even reach the kid's mother. If it were my kid, I damn well would have shown up for him. He walked home with those injuries, Zashi. And he mentioned her not being worried just now, Izashi frowned. The voice hero chewed on his bottom lip, lost in his thoughts. We can't start prying into his life until we have a reason to. Izuku shows up, he performs well in his classes, even if he's a little spacey at times. He's friendly and put together. There's nothing to be overly concerned about yet. 
Nothing that would prompt an emergency parent-teacher meeting or a wellness check. Doesn't feel right, the dark-haired man snapped tiredly, letting his eyes slip shut. No, Hisashi agreed with a shake of his head. But our hands are tied. None of the t other teachers have brought it up. He hasn't brought it up. We can't overstep, even if I trust your gut feeling more than anything. I see what you mean, but we've got a unique perspective. You could just be projecting on Midoriya. Shush, I know that you're not, but Nezu might think so. He knew when you we attended school here. Shota had opened his mouth, the, refute, the projecting statement, but it promptly snapped shut when Hazashi all but read his mind. Quieting him before he could even speak, he grimaced but didn't say anything, letting Hazashi finish his thoughts. If we're going to do anything, we're going to do it on his terms. Keep an eye on him, I will too, and if, when, Shota scoffs, cutting his husband off with more of a realistic work choice. All right, the blonde huffs fondly, and when something comes up, we'll intervene then. If someone had started stepping on your toes back then, you would have recoiled instantly. Let's not chase Midori away before we even have the chance to help him. Okay, whatever, Shota huffs, turning slightly in his sleeping bag. He's not happy with the outcome, but he understands it. Hisashi is right, even down to the conjecture of how Shota knows he would have reacted had one of his own teachers pressed him about his home life growing up. It was bad enough trying to keep Obero and Hisashi quiet about it, but he didn't need a teacher sticking their nose in his business. But at the first sign of trouble, I'm, I'll be getting involved. And you won't be alone, Hisashi snorted, patting his partner on the head. You rest for patrol tonight. I've got to head on over to the radio station to get ready for my show now. I'll see you after your patrol tonight. Love you, show. Love you, Shota grunts out. Squeezing his eyes shut, he knows his cheeks flare at the soft exchange, and that's only made worse by how Hisashi giggles at his misery. Shota forces his eyes open again to glare up at his shifting husband. I hate you. If that's true, you've got a funny way of showing it, Show. The blonde grins, leaning over to peck him on the lips before standing up. Stay safe. You too. And then he's gone, leaving Shota to try and get some rest, even if it's hard now that his thoughts are lingering on a certain student who he now has defeatedly had to admit is his newest problem child. This concludes Chapter 4 of UA Survival Guide. I'll pick up with Chapter 5 as soon as possible. Hope you guys are still enjoying this fic, and as always, thank you so much for listening.